Sergio Perez has found himself under fresh scrutiny from Red Bull after the latest disastrous performance where he failed to reach Q2. And the fact that he was knocked out by Lawson is kind of a poetic justice for what is coming for the Mexican driver. After the massive blow in the Constructors' Championship that has been recently addressed by Marco, can we see Perez out of Red Bull? And if so, who will be the successor of him? It goes without saying that Perez's performance in Las Vegas' qualifying session is something that has proven time after time that he's just not the right fit for Red Bull. And in 2025, it's going to hurt the team massively in the Constructors' Championship. The fact that he's been knocked out by both Racing Bull's drivers goes to show that while there were lots of changes on Perez's car in FP3, in which he found himself lacking grip during qualifying, it's not enough to be in the fastest 15 drivers in a one-lap pace is definitely something that keeps Red Bull on their toes when it comes to their future. Perez has complained that the changes made to his car were unique, meaning that Verstappen didn't have to deal with any of those modifications. And while Perez would have nevertheless found himself in a hairy position in Q2 had he not gone through these changes, being out of Q1 speaks volumes about whether or not he deserves the seat in Red Bull. The Austrian team are already considering a replacement, and even though the Latin American market is probably the only reason why they're keeping Perez at the team along with the checks that are coming from Carlos Slim, there comes a point where money can't buy your seat in a top performing team anymore. And for Perez, Las Vegas might have been the last straw. On top of that, what's worth noting is that Perez has secured just one top five finish in the last 16 races, and the poor performance is becoming too hard to ignore. He's the only driver from the top eight to have never won a race, and there's one miserable fact that we can't ignore as well. He's led only one lap in 2024, which goes to show that there are a lot of changes that need to happen in Red Bull now that 2025 is right around the corner, and the team will have to lock in if they want to keep the prize money as high as possible at the end of the season. When talking about the Constructors' Championship, in which Red Bull could have at least finished second with the way Verstappen is driving if Perez was constantly on the points, Marco has put the blame directly on the veteran driver, saying, Perez just wasn't quick enough. Maybe Red Bull should have used two sets of tyres. That would have helped him. But we thought he would come through Q1. It was tight and unfortunately, he is 16th for tomorrow's race. With our performance today, we've absolutely no chance of second place in the Constructors' Championship, let alone first. That was clear for a while, because if you compare Checo's points with Max's points, you know what the problem is. The fact that Perez is closer to the last driver on the grid, who is without a scored point, Valtteri Bottas, than the first driver, which is his teammate, goes to show what type of issues Red Bull are dealing with. And of course, these are situations that need to be handled sooner rather than later. This is why Red Bull will have a conversation and decisions will be made regarding the driver's lineup from 2025 onwards. And when talking about it, Marco said, after Abu Dhabi, we will sit down and go through all the possibilities we have, and then a decision will be done. I'm not saying there's a risk, I'm saying that we will look at all our options and then make a decision. This is something that's been known for quite some time now, because after Spa, when Perez was supposed to be replaced with Ricardo, Marco has been hinting towards the end of 2024, saying that the cards will be reshuffled for next year. And with how Lawson has been performing recently, scoring points in two of the three events he raced in so far after finishing P9 in both of them, it's safe to assume that there are plenty of options on the table that Red Bull will have after Abu Dhabi. Sonoda himself has also stated that he's willing to destroy every teammate he's given by Red Bull to show that while his temper and emotions are running high at times, he's not here by accident. And just because he's part of Honda doesn't mean he won't get a chance with Red Bull in the foreseeable future. Red Bull, however, are keener towards Lawson or Colapinto. And if you were to look at the Argentinian driver's latest crashes, you'd assume that he would take a bit of time to accommodate to the fast-paced and sometimes toxic environment that ravages Red Bull. But again, he comes from a place where Formula One is particularly popular, as we saw in Brazil, that tons of fans have come to Brazil, a neighboring country, to support the young driver, which shows that they can reach a new market and the new sponsors through him if they decide to sign him as Verstappen's teammate. During the press conference in Las Vegas, Horner has entertained the possibility to see Perez replaced for the upcoming period, or more precisely from 2025 onwards, and elaborating further on this matter, he stated, All the drivers that we have under contact, we are very clear on what their contractual situations are. We could, if we so choose, leave it all the way up until Melbourne next year if we want to, because we have drivers under contract, but inevitably, at the end of the year, we'll sit down and look at all the information that's available to us. The facts are here and we can't ignore them. 
Perez is just not good enough for the sport, let alone for Red Bull, because to be in the top three teams in the sport and not make it out of Q1 when it matters the most for your team in the battle for the Constructors' Championship just shows that you might be in a comfort zone that you should be getting out of immediately. The father of Perez, Anthony, said that unlike Lawrence Stroll, he cannot buy his son a team. But we very well know the background of the Mexican driver and who's the man standing behind the companies that are sponsoring Red Bull. So this statement makes zero to no sense. The situation is more or less the same. It just has a different point of view regarding the ownership of the team. And it's interesting because Red Bull has acted much more harshly with drivers who performed better than Perez back in the time, such as Albon and Gasly. And if we're to look at the Frenchman and what he's doing with Alpine right now, being the only driver to cause zero dollars in damage to a struggling team, we can understand why Red Bull might not be the best environment for young and aspiring drivers. Be that as it may, this rule doesn't seem to apply to Perez. And it's going to be very interesting to see how they're going to act further down the line, because Sonoda himself is adamant that he's deserving of a seat, and there's no obstacle that should keep him away from that. Yuki Sonoda, on the other hand, feels that there's no driver who deserves the seat more than him. And when elaborating further on this extent, the Japanese driver said, I always say that I definitely deserve that seat. I can't say more than that. It's up to Red Bull. There was a time when I started getting impatient, probably just before the summer break. But this thing I can't control. It's just part of life. I just have to keep doing what I'm doing. You know, in fact, I'm the one who's racing now. Whenever they keep sending their driver to me to beat me, whatever, I'll just keep destroying them, so that's what I'm going to do." Even Horner said that the tyre test in Abu Dhabi is not just a regular scheduled one, and one that the team will treat like a routine. Quite the contrary, they're going to see whether or not the Japanese driver will pose lap times that will be worthy for him to be considered the next Red Bull driver. When talking about this tyre test, Horner said, "'Yuki is a member of the junior team, and it's something that we have discussed with Honda. He will test the car at the tyre test following the conclusion of the season, and it's something that's been agreed upon for quite some time. It will again be good to give him a run, and get the opportunity to work with Red Bull Racing engineers and see how he performs in a Red Bull Racing car. But again, the situation's very difficult with Tsunoda, because his connection with Honda will always keep him related closer to the Japanese manufacturer than the Austrian team. And now that General Motors are likely to enter the grid from 2026 onwards, whether that's with Andretti or not, they will have to use an already existing engine manufacturer in their first season, with Honda emerging as the favourite. This would be the perfect opportunity for Sonoda to prove that he has what it takes to be given a proper, fast car and show Red Bull that they've been in the wrong to choose money over talent time after time. With all of this in mind, do you think that the poor performance of Perez in Las Vegas' qualifying was the last straw for the Austrian team to pull the plug on the Mexican driver? And if so, do you think that Lawson or Colapinto are the right choices for the second seat? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're interested in Andretti's massive new deal with Formula 1 from 2026 onwards, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.